So allow me to reintroduce my cousin, Kara Zor-El, or as the world will come to know her, Supergirl. These videos are not for children. If you're a children, then piss off. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, V Infusel. And a few months back, I checked out Superman and Batman Public Enemies, which was a pretty good Batman and Superman outing that felt a lot more like a Superman outing that Batman got dragged into. And today, I'm here to check out its follow-up, Superman and Batman, Apocalypse. I mentioned in my last video that this was the sequel to the previous Batman and Superman movie, but some people seem to fight with me on that. And I have no idea why, because it is. The same talent that was behind the last movie is behind this one. Same voice cast, same creators. Even the story acts as a direct continuation. The opening seconds of the movie have news reports talking about the resignation of former president Lex Luthor and the destruction of a giant kryptonite asteroid, which is exactly what happened in the previous movie. Also, these two movies are sold together and are the only two movies labeled Superman slash Batman. I think maybe the confusion comes from the change in animation style, which is definitely a thing. The art from this one doesn't really line up perfectly to the art of its predecessor. But I think this is kind of like when one artist takes over for another in a comic book series lineup. The stories that came before still stand, it's just the book cover looks a little bit different now. I think the aesthetic changes are definitely an upgrade from the previous installment in this two-part series. But regardless, it definitely follows the same timeline as Public Enemies, even if it doesn't resemble the movie that came before it to a T. Apocalypse has a lot of the same elements that made me love Public Enemies. The genuine friendship between these two heroic polar opposites, action scenes that you want to rewind and rewatch, fun lines of dialogue and sarcastic statements all throughout. Your cousin just torched $50,000 worth of custom hardware. Send me the bill. On a reporter's salary. Right. They're not really made out of... No. What's wrong with the beast? <laughs> Must be something he ate. But if the first movie felt more like a Superman movie with Batman dragged along for the ride, this one feels more like a Supergirl movie with Batman and Superman dragged along for the ride. Really, she should have got top billing. I can only imagine she didn't because at the time, it was probably thought that Supergirl movies didn't sell. Because at the time, well, they didn't. I just find it strange that these two movies are marketed as being Batman and Superman adventures when it seems like Batman's just the plus one. This would have even made more sense being called a Justice League movie over being called a Batman and Superman epic. I mean, it wouldn't have made a lot more sense, but it would have made more sense. The movie starts like all great movies do, by ripping off the Terminator, and it would appear that the role of Kyle Reese is being played by Supergirl. Superman's cousin makes her way to Earth and immediately makes it onto the Dark Knight's radar, and also his batshit list. Batman is more than just a little suspicious of the stranger from the sky, who seems to have very limited knowledge of her life before her time on the planet. Unlike her younger, but now older cousin, she finds herself in far less control of her growing power which is a problem because she has the potential to be more powerful than her more famous relative. As Crypto similarly finds himself distrusting of the Girl of Steel, growling, barking, and attempting to bite her on sight. Crypto woke up and chose violence, and no amount of Scooby Snacks is gonna help this situation. Wonder Woman also joins Batman in his overall pretty valid concern, feeling that Kara is too dangerous to the world around her without proper training. I think this is one of the most human portrayals I've ever seen of this non-human Kryptonian. There's some cute scenes watching her live as a fish out of water, seeing as she learns and adapts to her new environment and do as Earth Girls do. But I think much more than that, her super struggle is properly showcased. We understand how she's feeling. She arrives at a planet that she was predestined to land on, and it seems immediately her decisions are made for her. Batman decides she's a threat and wants her under the observation of the Batcave. Superman decides that she should live the life of a civilian. Wonder Woman decides that she needs to stay amongst the Amazons and learn how to properly be trained. She doesn't really get to make any choices for herself. And over time, that understandably makes her more than a little bit resentful. So it makes sense that she turns to the dark side when introduced to dark side. Because unlike the heroes that she encounters, he encourages her to make her own choices. Which unfortunately leads her to making the bad ones because the bad guy is the only one giving her an option. I do think they lose the plot a little bit by doubling back and saying that she was under Darkseid's influence as opposed to her making a mistake. And that seems like a mistake on the behalf of the creators. Because it would have been a much stronger story had mysticism not played into this. A simple misunderstanding and manipulation would work wonders on this story. 
I think it would be more telling of Kara as a person. Because even though she's an alien, she's still a person. A person who could be misled. A person who, when is under pressure, could crack. People make mistakes. And I personally think that that is a better story than what was told. They had something good, but, but then they muddled it a little bit. It's, it's okay, I still love it. I like the way that Kara finally stands up for herself at the end of the movie. And I think it's a pretty impactful moment. You could have become the most powerful being in the universe. Your life here will be nothing in comparison. But it'll be my life. Kara's basically saying that even if she doesn't live up to the potential others see for her, or the expectations they have of her, she's still determined to live her own life. And live it the way that she sees fit. Because it is her life to live. I also love how this movie portrays Superman. In a very similar sense, it displays this alien's humanity. As ironic of a statement as that is. Not only does he have an immediate, unbreakable bond with his blood, but despite being her younger cousin, he really takes on more of a big brotherly role. Well? Ah, uh, no way. Perfect. Rightfully so, he's very protective of her. And his care for Kara is endearing. His love for her is sweet, but unbeknownst to him, it could almost come off as suffocating, as he's treating her more like a child than her own person, by constantly standing in her way and not letting her take her own risks, all because he thinks he knows better. But even past his care for his cousin, this movie does right by this character. Showing him being forced to take the lives of mindless, soulish drones, but still grieve over their loss and feel guilt over having had to stop them. The movie also does right by Batman, as his cynicism is on full display. Not only does he not trust Supergirl, but he's actively trying to poke holes in her stories. It seems like the world's greatest detective never stops investigating her. I like this because it makes sense for the character. Yes, it isn't truly warranted, because at the end of the day we know Supergirl is good, but he doesn't know that. It's in tone with the character completely. And good and bad is not something you could just sniff out. He has to assess the situation. Batman is never quick to trust. And some powerful amnesiac with the ability to destroy the whole planet isn't someone he's going to immediately be keen on. If he can't assess and determine what's inside one's head and heart, he's going to judge them by what they can do with their fists and see them as a potential threat. So I like that this was Batman's reaction, because it's a very Batman reaction. But overall, the Dark Knight gets pushed to the shadows of the story. I know that he's technically one of the titular characters, but honestly, he's really a background player who has one scene to shine in. And it's a pretty good scene, but it just it doesn't make sense that he's the title character. Actually, come to think of it, Wonder Woman plays directly into the plot much more than he does. Why isn't she on the cover? There were definitely a lot of moments that caught me off guard in this movie, and I mean that in the best way possible. A whole alien army of doomsdays was not something I'd ever thought I'd see. But holy shit is it a horrific thought in hindsight. Just one of those things caused the death of Superman. A whole malicious militia of these guys could cause the end of everything. Having a full-on ferocious family feud between conflicting cousins is also not something I expected to be on the menu either. Their bond is broken over battle before ultimately being restored. But I straight up didn't see this coming. But man, I'm sure glad I did see it after the fact. Or I think what's most surprising is Darkseid being voiced by the captain from Brooklyn Nine-Nine because I couldn't stop picturing that character any time I had heard him speak. It's over, Darkseid. Even you must realize the folly of being a king without a kingdom. Oh. Oh, no. I gotta say, I think I like this movie a lot more than the first one. I think that there's a little bit more depth to this. This one feels less action-induced and more plot-focused, making the sequel feel more purposeful than its predecessor. I think it has a much stronger story, and it's a better overall product than what came before it. Honestly, if anything, this just makes me want to see a Supergirl movie more now than ever. It kind of feels crazy that we haven't gotten one, especially after this. There's obviously so much that can be done with the character, and what that character's introduction can do to the fictional world that surrounds her. And I find myself a little bit bummed that this is where this canon ends. I really would have been in favor of seeing it continue. Maybe have a whole universe in a similar fashion to how the DC animated movies work now. Regardless, I give this movie my highest recommendation, and if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you go check it out. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more Batman and Superman content, leave me a comment saying, Batman VET. Not just because it's topical, but because that was the real superhero beat-up film that we deserve, but not the one that we needed. Anyway, with all that being said, I was your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso, and I thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Oh, and before you go, I wanted to ask,
Have you ever loved one of my videos but couldn't find it because the copyright overlords have struck it down and smited me? Have you ever wanted to watch some of my many, many, many deleted videos again? Have you ever wanted me to review something specific? Like we're talking a whole ass review at your own request. Have you ever wanted early access to my content weeks or even at times months before it comes out on the channel? Well, if the answer to all above is yes, you're in luck. All of these things are a possibility with the relaunch of my Patreon. So feel free to check it out and sign up for all the rewards I mentioned and all the ones I didn't. Link in the description below. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds. And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time, same bad channel.